We began this class by looking at classifications and characteristics of property. We saw how property is classified into personal and real property, with personal property meaning tangible objects that are reasonably movable and not specifically attached to a piece of land. Real property is a defined segment of land and any structures that are attached to the ground. A fixture is something that would be considered personal property if it weren't physically and permanently attached to a piece of real estate. In the state of Michigan, assessors classify real property into six categories based on what the land is used for. Those real property classifications are residential, agricultural, commercial, industrial, development, and timber cutover. Remember that real property is physically characterized by three main factors, immobility, indestructibility, and that no two parcels of land are exactly the same. From there, real property is economically characterized by its scarcity, fixity, improvements and modifications, and finally, the effects of location. We also examined the property aspect of real estate, starting with legal descriptions. The legal description is the official explanation used to identify a specific property on legal documents like deeds. This description can be the result of one of several survey methods. Whichever method is chosen, the resulting description should allow anyone to find the property, even in an area with similar looking properties. When we describe a structure, we can do it in a number of ways. The structure can be described by how it relates to the plot of land it sits on, using a land to building ratio. We can also describe a structure in terms of its physical dimensions. This can be done in terms of raw length, width, and height. Once we get inside, though, we need to start talking about living areas and finished and unfinished areas. When we're dealing with rented property, the interior of a structure can be broken down into usable and rentable space. Usable area comprises only the areas actually used by a tenant. Rentable area includes usable area, but also adds any portion of the communal areas that also belong to the tenant. There are other pieces of information about a property that should be divulged to potential buyers or tenants. These include factors like information about the state and condition of the property, existence of any environmental hazards, any important facts about the property's location, or the effect of any land use controls, zoning changes, or special assessments. We also discussed the concept of a bundle of rights. Possession of a property confers a bundle of rights on a person. This bundle can be bigger or smaller depending on whether the person owns or rents. If they own the property, the size of the bundle will vary based on how ownership was established. Properties can be held by one person or held collectively by two or more people. Joint tenancies involve two or more parties that have equal interest, or the bundle of rights in a piece of property. Tenancy by the entirety is a special kind of joint tenancy between married spouses. Both joint tenancy and tenancy by the entirety grant right of survivorship or the right to automatically inherit interest in the property from a joint tenant who dies. Tenancy in common doesn't equally divide the interest in the property and there is no right of survivorship, but the tenants can transfer their interest without the permission of the other tenants. Property can also be held by a third party in an arrangement called a trust. The third party called the trustee owns and manages the property until instructed to give the property to any named parties called beneficiaries. An estate in land is an interest in a piece of property. Freehold estates usually contain the right of ownership where non-freehold estates, often called leaseholds, do not. Another important topic was that of encumbrances and how they are obligations or burdens that can interfere with the sale or transfer of a property. Liens are common encumbrances and are an interest in a property established to ensure the repayment of a debt to the lien holder. A lien usually grants the holder of the lien the right to foreclose on a property if there is a default on the debt. Consensual liens are ones that are voluntarily accepted by the property owner. Mortgage liens are a common form of consensual lien. Statutory liens are ones that are applied by public agencies or created by laws. These kinds of liens are not voluntary and include various types of tax liens. Judgment liens are liens placed on a property to ensure the payment of a monetary judgment resulting from a lawsuit. We also discussed less well-known encumbrances. Non-possessory interests are right to a property that are held by someone other than the property owner, and easements allow a non-property owner to access a property or to prevent the property owner from utilizing a property in a certain manner. 
while profits allow a non-property owner to access and remove natural resources from a property. Covenants are contractual agreements that prevent some kind of activity by the affected property owners, and equitable servitudes are similar, but are enforced by court orders called injunctions. Finally, encroachments are situations where a neighboring property owner builds a structure partially or wholly on another person's property. To wrap up, real estate is a combination of a piece of real property, the land, buildings, and natural resources, and a bundle of rights, also called the interest or estate. It's nearly impossible to have just the real property or just the rights. The two are fundamentally linked. But we can look at both parts of the real estate whole to see how they work. Now that we've established what real estate is, we can move on to a deeper discussion of property value.